So I'm going to call a meeting to order at 5 o'clock on my watch at 4.59 on the official uh, town hall clock. And over there, too. And we have Paul Seminary here, and I apologize, I've already forgotten your name. Jess, Jess Clark. Jess Clark, who is interested in being on our zoning board of adjustment. Uh, any amendments to the agenda? Well, the only thing is that uh, we're going to have to postpone the update on the Middlesex Vermont or emails because Phil is not had to go to a funeral. So he said he would prefer to be here for that. And also I need to add the appointing, the annual appointing a select board delegate to go to the VLCT annual meeting. I think some of you have done that before in the past. Anyway, have we? Yeah, everybody I think, didn't you go that. once? I have been, I will raise no, my hand and say I have been in the past. He always goes. I think he's the one who no. says, I'll do it. What's so, the date on it? They think it's Monday, the 12th. October 2nd. And somebody has to go. The we slack board is supposed to, to There have been something. years where we have not had people. We have the people where you have not, but, this, but there have been years where you have to. Correct. If somebody can go, it's a good thing, but it's not. But it's not, it's down in Rutland now. I can't, I've got to teach class that day. Sorry. Isn't it down in, in Rutland now? Well, it's a Sarah. usually it's a very technical. It's uh, <laughs> too technical for you to understand. Yes, it's all, the Killington. I read right? the yeah. It's, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's all day long. I know. Yeah, I can't, I but there was one people. thing when it was Barry. It's another thing when it's Rutland. I guess there won't be a representative. Oh, well. <laughs> well, well, would you would you remind me of that in a couple of weeks and let me see where I am because I can go if I'm available. Okay. Reluctantly. What do you get out of it? <clears throat> oh, they just. <laughs> well, it's. Uh, it's I would tell you it's it's nothing more than the stuff that we all get in our email and everything else. But it is nice to look some of those people in the eye, and you do get to meet them, and it does make it different when you call them up and ask them a question. You know, it's the old thing. I mean, yeah. and you meet other people there. I, I'm not yeah, saying I mean, it's totally worthless. I'm just saying it's a long day, and a lot of it is repetitive. And a lot of it doesn't apply to us. So you listen to all this mishmash of yeah. stuff. Yeah, I've been to it in the past. Right. Only only designated city or town delegates may vote. And if, and if you want to go, I, the select board has to sign this to approve this and put it in the minutes and have to sign it. So you could do this now. We could appoint you now. And then if something happens on October 2nd, you can't make it, you can't make it. Let's let's, let's do it the other way. <laughs> let's do it the other way. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, let's not wait. put it in the minutes that I'm going yet. We have time, she right? She just wants it. We do. <laughs> Yeah. All right, yes. you have until September 20th. Okay. Yeah. I'm Mary, could you pass blueberries, please? I thought you said you had so many. I did, but that doesn't mean I don't want your blueberries. <laughs> Mine are all rotten. Look at this. I Three I minutes know. ahead of schedule. Good thing. Road I'm foreman, sure Paul Seminara. I plan to burn it up, too. I picked them last <laughs> night over there. I put them in the fridge so they wouldn't get too. So I, I'm going to... I'm going to paraphrase a lot of what I'm going to have to say, but I'm sure there's going to be questions. Um, so bear with me and, and ask when you need to. Long story short, it's been it's been a tough season. With the storms we had, with basically the winter to the mud season, right through to all the storms and everything. Um, it, as far as trying to stay with our five-year plan, is gone and out the window. It, it's just, at least as of right now, um, we're... Starting Monday, we'll be back on our May 1st project. Back when we were supposed to be in May. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the reality. <laughs> that's the reality. Um, so, so to steamroll off of that, work on the damaged roads is all done. Barnett Hill, uh, Lower Barnett Hill, Sunnybrook Road, West Hill, Macy Road, and other small areas that, that, that were included in all those storms. As of right now, those are all completed, minus the fact that we just have to get some gravel resurfacing on that. Um, Peter. Come on in. I'm sorry. Is there somebody out there? Why don't you have oh. a seat here? No problem. There's two of us. Oh, Hi. Okay, well, we, I, can, I can get you two seats. That's all right. I can stand. I can stand. I can stand. I can stand. Oh, okay. okay. And you are? Marshall Gray. Yeah. Joanne Gray. Okay. And... You I wish to be heard on something, or are you just here to observe? Yeah. No, I just I have a complaint. I'd like to just put up. Okay. 
Chairman. Okay. Stand by. Do we keep you there? No, we won't keep you too long. Go ahead. Uh, so fuel tank at the shop, all prepped for concrete. We're basically ready to go. Steve's going to get in touch with Louis Gendron. That's that'll be done this week. Uh, Maybe well, the tank outside the for the tank. Yeah. It was on temporary for right now until we rolled into the new year and everything. We finally got that. That'll be done basically this week, and Louis will be able to do his deal. So we're good. We also have our permit for that. So that's all good. Um, attended an emerald ash borer class two weeks ago. Um, the Conservation Commission is well aware it's in town. We've got a lot of trees. As of right now, where we stand with that, uh, I talked with Lee Ro Rosper. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, it sounds like he's going to be stepping down as chair. So I don't know where that's going to leave. Yeah, I don't know where that's going to leave us. Um, I don't know if that's. planning to do that um, so either way as of right now they do not have a, an official inventory in town I'd really like to start with the main roads see what we're looking at but I there's gonna be a lot of trees bottom line there's gonna be a lot of trees. Be hundreds of trees when thousands. you say a lot there'll be thousands, thousands. But we're talking, and we're really talking about within the, the right side of the road within yeah. the right of the right yeah. East Vaughn Pillar is about 2800 yeah. and they all need to come down no they don't need to come down, but if they're not treated, they, they, there's a 99% chance that they will get hit within the next 10 years. So basically, it's starting a, point. Some people say a lot sooner. Yeah. It, it, could, it could be. And, and it's a, but it's you a, you, you've seen some here in town? We, I have not, but there's confirmation. They do have confirmation it's in Middlesex. Oh. It is, they it's meaning? Meaning UVM extension. The people who know. Where it is. They, all, take the nets uh, they have the everything in the tree. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so basically, I, I, I'll. I'm just more touching on that. But but bottom line is, I'm going to be working with them as diligently as we can. So as this this becomes a real issue, which it, you know it's going to start becoming. The co-op is working on this too. <coughs> Washington Electric Co-op. Well, Washington Electric. So, I mean, should I hook somebody up with you? Well, I mean, I can certainly talk to Mike, and he can point me in the right direction yeah. with that. You know, a lot of this will coincide. Because I um, think they're hoping people will do inventories, but I think, and I think they're, I think the uh, Regional Planning Commission will help a little bit as well. Um, but either way, I think they're really going to let it fall on the towns. And Lee said it does sound like they, this is not news to them. They are, they've got preliminary stuff in mind, so. I'll try and work with them as best I can as they work through that transition to get an inventory. And so, just to just to back up a little bit, and I don't yep. want to take a lot of time no, on no. this tonight. But my understanding of this is, if we take the trees down while they're still alive, they can be used for lumber, they can be used for firewood, they can be there's used for value. Anything. There's some value to it. Yep. Right. And it is the most economical time to take them down because yep. once they are in the it's dead five or, years, five years, and it's Right. Gone. It's no, gone. No, I've got it. Yeah, I've got really it. So just it's it's literally going to be if if we are trying to do this in the delayed action mode, we're going to be paying at least twice as much to take these trees down, and, and it's going to be much more dangerous, right. and it's going to be harder to get somebody to do it. Yeah. So you know, my question is, and you know, I think inventories are a useful thing to know to have some idea what the scale is, yeah. but if there are loggers out there, qualified, experienced loggers who can deal with this problem, we need to get them signed up sooner rather than later and say, listen, all we know right now is it's a boatload of trees. Yeah. You know, yep. it's years, years of work yep. for depending yes. on the size of the outfit we yes. hire. Yep. So I think we need to be proactive about getting, you know, not, not study it and then everybody else has everybody signed up and then we can't find anybody. Right. Let's say I mean, hey, we're ready UVM to... is telling us if, if you can't treat your trees like the city of Montpelier, you need to figure out now what what uh, the game plan is because it's not if it's right. it's when. Is right. Montpelier treating have... them? Mont yeah. Montpelier only has forty. Well, how, how, how do you it? how do you treat them? They they actually have an injection process. It's a two year cycle that they go through, and it's about eight hundred dollars a tree. It's okay. actually there there you're actually able to buy the equipment and the the pesticide yourself now and you only need to go to a day training but yeah whatever the, the it's fact between five and eight hundred dollars yeah I, I don't so know what it is but if we have 
if we have special trees, like if we had a beautiful ash tree out in front of the town hall, it's absolutely worth doing that. It They're is. Beautiful trees. Yeah. But, you know, we might have, I don't know if there are any around the school, but I'm guessing we wouldn't have half a dozen trees that we would want to treat. And if we're going to treat them, we better be treating them soon because once they get it, it's too late. And so, you want to treat some so that you have them to continue to grow. That's what I've understood. So we don't want to like let every single oh, no. tree well, we'll never get every well, single one. Well, the fact of the matter is you're only in the right of way. We're just doing the right of way. the right of way of the roads, and then WEC is going to do the right of way in the electric line. Oh, right. Sure. But all I'm, all, I, all I'm saying is, out of thousands and thousands yeah. of trees, I mean, if we did if we did two dozen trees, I would be very surprised. I mean, I have one tree on my land that I'm probably going to do, yeah. but only one, and I have hundreds of them on my land. Sure, we all do. Yeah. So I'm facing the same problem. I've got to have somebody make get somebody lined up to cut all my trees, and it can't be the five years later Johnny Picard approach either. Right. It's got to be the <laughs> yep, get, in there, get in there and do it approach. Please don't put that in the minutes. Yeah. Anyway. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm all for inventories and all for yeah. classes and all for studying. But yeah. We need to. It's our. It's going to be our problem at the end of the day. Nobody else's. And ones that are out of the right of way that fall in are still our problem. Just like all the other trees. Right. So, we just need to be aware of. I want everyone to be aware of that, and I'll be working with them as we move towards what what possible solutions are. Because I don't think it's going to be a. Yep. This is what we're doing, and then you just tell the public. Because I think that's not going to sit well. I think it's going to be more involved, I feel like. But we'll get there when we get there. Um, Doug Grout, no longer mowing. He did the first cut this spring, um, and then he started the second cut, did Culver Hill, uh, Government Hill, Wood Road, and then his second mower died. And he's officially calling it quits. So we had contracted out for the He's, he's the guy we've he's used for oh, years. He's always done it. So, so Doug, he's done it one and a half times or one, one half time? One, one time, <coughs> one full time, <coughs> and, a, and a day. And he's giving us the day. Thanked us no. for our, all his the years of business, but he's, he's done. He, he can't do it any longer with, with, with his help and all he's his help. He's got some health issues, too. Right? <clears throat> exactly. So that that's one of the things that we need to be thinking about going into next year is, either how are we going to hire that out or at some point do we look at how we're going to do it and and deal with brush as well that's that's a big thing Maybe like a piece of equipment like a piece of equipment renting leasing whatever hiring the problem is just doing the roadsides alone is not is not enough anymore we, we can't keep up with brush simple as that so that's that part again not not a big thing for so right just now. so <laughs> just to be clear a machine with one of these mower things, either the chain one or the lash and slash one, yep. that has the arm and goes up, can deal with brush as well as the road. Right. Correct. The okay. catch is, what takes Doug a week or two with two of those machines, you will not be able to do in the same amount of time with that mower because it's substantially smaller. His mowers are seven to eight feet. These are only five feet. Five. Yeah. What do you so, mean these? When do you want? The, the, ones uh, the ones with the side arm oh, that, we'll that, that we rent. It's a smaller. Okay. It's a smaller thing, but it's able to go way up in the air. Correct. So you can cut back. You know, all our roads, which are getting narrower and narrower and narrower as the brush grows in. And in the past, we've done it by hand. Yeah. And we still do. It's just the rate of the rate of accomplishment is <laughs> in a square. Yeah, compared to what you can do with that machine. That's that's the bottom line. So nothing to worry about right now, but I, I want to, I, I want it to be known and kind of set the thought. Do, that other was there towns, do other towns have mowers? They're they're beginning to. Yeah. This Montpelier just do. bought a brand new one. Yeah. Yeah. Some do. How much are they? One hundred fifty grand. Oh wow. New. Yeah. You know, but. That you would use like how many times a year? Ideally, you'd mow still mow the twice a year. People seem to. That seems to be a big thing. People don't yeah. mind paying to have the roadsides mowed twice a year, which it does help. It's yeah. not spreading the invasive species, you know, before it goes to seed, seed that's, yeah. that's it. Right. The catch is using that in between, trying to get all that roadside brush. But that kind of leads into another part of this, which just takes another guy off of dirt work. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, 
Winter sand. Uh, so I, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Ask one more go ahead. Question. Yeah, what is the cost to rent that machine in deck? Uh, I think we're three three thousand a week. Yeah, I think it is. Ish, somewhere thousand. around there. And how the many weeks would we need to rent oh. it? Just, or weeks, just, just anyway. to yeah, I mean, just to do the mowing itself would would take a month. Just the mowing for, the for one mow. For a no. single roadside mow. Right, so you'd really be doing that twice. Yeah. So Would that would be like 24000 a season. Yeah. yeah. 12000 for the yeah. first month. So yeah, that's a plus, plus the guy to plus operate. The guy. Plus the guy to operate it. And again, that doesn't include, that's only the time to mow the roadside. Right. That's all that fresh. is. So that's if we were fresh. going to, just, and I'm just trying to get my arms around this. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to engage in a more active brush cutting program, mm -hmm. we could easily spend, including the pay for a man, fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year. Easily, man. easily. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So you take the pay for the man out, which is probably ten thousand of that. We would we would pay for a very nice used piece of equipment yeah. in like three years. Yeah. It'd be just like the excavator. It would literally, it, it, two three years, it it would start making you money back. Yeah. If if you were going to continue that process. Well, it's a good thing for us to think about at budget time. I just want it to be known. That's all. Well, I think I think. So we're not going to have a second million this year. For we will year? not. Not okay. unless we try and contract yeah, okay. someone now, which no. is probably. So do we have? I, I mean, my I don't mind if the if the if the roads don't get cut back the second time. I mean, we went for years with only doing it once a year. But I think what we do need to do, and probably it means we need to hire somebody with a bush hog and go around and do the intersections. Yeah. Cut those back because the sight lines are bad, and I've heard that from a lot of people. Oh yeah. So I don't know who that is, but we have a number of people in town who do that who do that work, and I think we need to. Yeah figure out how many intersections it is and how much time it is and get that lined up. Do you agree with that, Steve? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise yeah. we're going to... No, you need to do that. We're going to have... already taken care of one of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which one? The one we've never done oh. before, but... Oh, okay. Anyways. Okay. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. No problem. No, no, no. It's like I said, I'm, I'm going to try. I don't want to stay within here, but... Uh, winter sand continues to, you know, kind of be a big expense for us. Uh, some some small prospecting on our town pit has shown that there might still be value in there. Um, just some small preliminary stuff that Steve and I just kind of poked around with our backhoe. We found some sand and gravel. How much and for how long we don't know until we we do some some more testing, more extensive testing. Um, you know, I've been talking with Steve about trying to find all the lines that, that apparently Mike Patterson is willing to help us out with. Um, Fred McCullough is willing to... Borderline. Borderline. Right. Yeah, property right. it's, all, it's all surveyed. He, I just asked him if he would flag it so that... We don't want to be... Right. <laughs> it's a little, I can tell you, it's a little unclear because over the years... Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Stuff is just so we've there. got... Yeah, some guidelines right. where where we should be and where we probably should right. be avoiding. Yeah, um, so that that's a good thing, uh, and we've got some community involvement with that. That hopefully with our you know with those people we can we can see what's really of value there and what what's available to us. The other part is trying to figure out what we can do across the road, which we've yeah. talked about several times. I'd yeah. like to set that in motion. It, it's yeah. hard being a neighbor. I think it'd be better. I would like to be more involved with it, but I think it'd be better if oh, I didn't. Who's, do we own across the road? No, we do not. It's a private landowner, but I have talked with I have talked with him, and he's a uh, game. We haven't talked about any particulars, but he's interested in doing it. So, so and we've talked about this in the past, but right. the game plan would be it's, it's relatively easy for the town to get the permit. Right. Much easier than it is to open a commercial pit. Right. Plus, if he truly tried to open a commercial pit, the neighbors would be, be berserk because there'd be huge trucks going up and down the road and all all that kind of stuff. So, trying to make a deal with him where we go ahead and get the pit licensed, it's solely for the town of Middlesex. We pay him so much a yard for the sand and if there's any gravel, the gravel that we extract from there. And then we agree to put it back, whatever putting it back is. Right. When it's finished. Just restoration. If we could, right, yeah. restoration. If we could make a deal like that, 
it would be tremendously to our benefit in that the price would be significantly less, the transportation would be yeah. way less, and as I said to Paul earlier today, what we used to do in the old days is have two sand piles, one over there and one at the town shed, and have the loader one place and the backhoe the other, and that cut down a lot of the back and forth on the trucks, because for that whole side of town, yeah. they could go down there and get, get their sand rather yeah. than going all the way back to the pit. So all in all, if we could make the deal, it would be a big boon, a big boon for us. But this gentleman who owns that property is not an easy person to deal with. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I, but I think that can be worked out. Okay. Yeah. okay. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah. Sorry. No, and like I said, I, I want to be proactive with that, both yeah. with our pit and with that. I think it's yeah. the benefit of all of us as a whole. It really is. So yeah. one note on what on our pit up there. Um, we have had an offer um, for somebody to come in there at cost for the because you need a large excavator mm -hmm. to dig as deep as you can go. Yeah. And Fred McCullough has offered to do it at cost, at his cost, at some point if we can arrange it. So. Yeah, because our I, excavator I, doesn't have a long enough boom right, to get down deep can't, enough. Right. We can't get down deep enough to really see because you got quite a bit of overburden in some places. Uh, and that's what we need to find out, how much overburden we've got there to get at the good stuff. So, so overburden snow. means dirt uh, before you get to the gravel. Yeah, the, the stuff that's no good to us. Yeah. Yeah. So we need so what we need to do, do that is, this fall. Is that he can do that this, you know, based on his schedule. But right. it'll he be before it could be before winter or, or pre-winter. Just early so winter. that we get an idea, so we, we yeah. can get an idea of what we've got there really weigh it out and because you know we what we don't want to do is, is throw away a resource that may be hidden underneath there and still have dollars. Well we wouldn't throw it away, we just wouldn't No throw it away as in not using, which is yeah. just okay. as good. <laughs> which is one and the same at least for this. So we I just want to make sure that um, you know we, we really put the effort into seeing what, what's available. Um, town garage insulation. I know we've talked about this a long time. Um, we've put money in a garage real maintenance fund. fund. Yep. I'm not pushing for anything. If if nothing serious is going to happen down the road with a new facility, then we should definitely figure something out for some at least a little bit of insulation in the roof. The snowflakes sizzle when they hit. So <laughs> well, it's a lot of dollars I, I, flying the, out of the roof. The bottom line is, is we've, as we've discussed, we've got other right. issues. Town clerk's right. office is another issue. But, you know, my thing is, before we pour any more money into that building to really have an assessment of it done and say, is this building worth right. putting money into or are we better off clearing off the slab and building a new structure? Because what I don't want to do is spend $25,000 insulating that and then bulldoze it down three years later. I agree. That's not a good use of and that's And that's my thing. If, if, if that's a route we're going to, you know, there's a window there. If, if it's going to be this amount, then it's not worth putting the effort in. So have you ever gotten any bids on it? No, because I'd like to see first off what, what really I want to make sure that there's no future plans to do something or, or soon enough where we're throwing money. I think the, I think the first it. issue, Mary, is to is to have someone tell us if that building is worth saving, and yeah. if it is worth saving, what the cost what, of what would saving it is. Who would do that? Someone like Paul Sprisky or? You talking about it? Uh, not so much or? an energy person, and then energy. Yep. Yeah. So if it's okay with you guys, I'd like to at least figure out, That's good. That, yeah, just what that might be, what that looks like for us, just for sake of, of knowing, because otherwise we need to know. We're we gotta know. Anyone, anyone, right? Yeah, we gotta know. Get, get the information. While we're on that, can we use the say? Are you gonna use a structural engineer up there to come in and look at the building? I'm gonna just reach out to all my resources and see what. dropping from this, from the, from where that walkway outside meets with the town hall. I have a feeling there's been a big shift. None of the doors is working. The door at this top there isn't working. The door down here isn't working. It's both rubbing against the, the frost the heaps. I don't think it's a frost heap. I don't know if the humidity is something else. Oh, no. it's, it seems more significant. All right. Well, the same issue applies yeah. here. But I mean, maybe can <laughs> yeah. we just have the same structural engineer so stop figured, by here? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Figure out someone qualified to be able to do that. Okay. So at the end of this, uh, really just to wrap it up, we're struggling to keep up with, with all the damage. All the damage and, and all the maintenance, scheduled maintenance. 
pavement potholes. It, it's tough to, we're, we're doing our best to try and keep up, but with the amount of damage we've had this year, and I know it's not every year, I'm, I'm worried that we're, we're going backwards. It's just really tough for us to try and keep up with everything that's going on. Um, I, I'll be honest, it, it's become more of a triage list. <laughs> where, where is it the worst? And we start from there because we just can't stay on any kind of schedule at this point. And it, it's, it's tough. It's, it, you know, so I don't know as we go into budget season, do we talk about, you know, Steve and I have talked about it before, whether we subcontract certain projects, whether it be culverts, ditching brush small stuff or do we do we lease equipment purchase equ i don't know or, or do we hire additional help part-time help for the summer i i know i'm just i'm getting to the point where i feel like we're we're fighting a losing battle i think we are going backwards right now this year um, but i think before we jump into anything i think we let us get through this season, and then you and I can sit down, try to come up with a plan, come to the select board with what we perceive as a as a solution. Right. Yeah, because we're, and I think the other piece of this is, and I don't know the best way to get a word out. I hate to spend the money to send everybody in town a letter, but I know a lot of people don't look at front porch forums, so I don't know how we do it. But I would much rather let people know now where we stand in terms of our five-year plan and say you know we had this discussion at town meeting last year we basically pushed our, our town plan back a year now we pushed it back another half year you need to be aware that these weather problems and issues that we've been dealing with are putting us behind and you're going to hear more about this at town meeting time so get ready yeah. but but tell them right now because People are asking me, hey, this was the year we were supposed to resurface East Hill. What's going on? Well, nothing, nothing's going on because we've been doing everything else. Yeah. And no, I, I, I think we just owe it to ourselves and owe it to the community to get the word out there. And I don't know I the totally best. Agree. I don't know I the agree. best way to do it. I think if it means a letter, it means a letter because I totally agree that like, you know, people are. No one goes to and looks at the minutes, even right. though they have every right to go and look at the minutes and transparency is super important because the, this weather is not going to change we're no. not going to be having you know I mean yes there might be a year of reprieve but in general we're, we're going to be we can't be playing catch-up constantly no I mean and we're literally going to start on May 1st and it may be more people and that's the reality of living in the country and living with 95 percent back roads yeah so so anyway we all need to be thinking about it totally agree with that What's the what's the cost of sending out a letter, postage, printing, mailing? About six hundred, right? Yeah, it used to be around six hundred. It's six hundred. It's about right. Let me just take that off the top of my head. It's fifty well, cents. No, it's like yeah. six hundred. So it's always saying a letter and nine hundred and some pounds. But I mean, if we if we if we write the letter and give it to somebody and have them mail it for us, oh, oh. Well, that's more. Well, we stopped all the tax bills, so. It's again. 50 cents a letter, and we have 900 and some houses. So and then we just have. It's how much? So how long did it take us to stuff those tax bills? Well, there was three of us doing it, so and it took us maybe three hours. So there you go. It's four four room for numbers. So it's 500 bucks Great. if we don't have it done by an outside vendor. If we have it done by an outside vendor, it's probably 50 percent more. I'm just guessing. I would guess so. Yeah, we could. I mean, we could all do it again. We could just mail letters. Because they don't all have to go out at they, once either. Right. Unlike the tax bills, say, there's no it's, pressure. You can do it in between phone calls. You can do it whenever. So. <laughs> I love this job. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so the yeah. next yeah. question yeah. is, who's our professional yeah. authoress? Oh. Oh, I can write Let's them. see. Yeah. That's right. She can make a story out of this. Okay. Um, so, okay. okay, but I, so I just think we really need to do that. Yes. Okay, so yeah. why don't we do this? Why don't we draft a letter and, and you guys review it, and then at the next board meeting, you can sign off on it, sign it, we'll right. sign it, and mail it off. I just, yes. I just think we really need to do it's that. It's a way of getting rid of those off. Can I ask you about people with private culverts? Because when I drive up East Hill Road, there's especially one culvert on the right-hand side. <laughs> yeah, oh, my <laughs> neighbor, my oh, beloved neighbor. About back in okay. April. Yeah, and yep. you said they had to say that they were going to do something, and it looks just as bad and crushed and horrible as it always does, and they're not doing it. That I, you think they're waiting for you to do it? Or? They know that I'm not doing it. I've okay. made that perfectly clear. I've already babysat it and fixed it to where they can safely drive across. And they seem I, happy with that. I don't 
don't know if they're happy, but I've made my statement clear. You neglect your culvert for so long, and I'm not going to continue repairing. Are other people doing making any repairs? No, oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's, if they want to get out comfortably, then yeah. My neighbor had to totally redo this. Yeah. That's expensive. On the same side of the road. There was tremendous water. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everywhere. Tremendous oh, I'm all about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you done, Paul? Have you said it? I'm, I'm all done, okay. unless we've got some questions. I just have a question. Um, what was, uh, is, was this unexpected, the sad story of the transmission? Yeah. That's the Western Star. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I was right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much is that? 20K. Wow. Almost. Yeah. That was after we did the other repair. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And into the new year, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, so we start out right in the. Yeah. Start out oh. in the red. Yeah. yeah. What, red that, what do you think caused that? Steve, oh, no. Steve talked to the mechanic. I was so <laughs> fed up with them. I, yeah, I don't know. I just, and Paul and I actually talked about this earlier today because conveniently enough, my car broke down right at the town hall, oh. town garage, I should say. Couldn't have been more perfect uh, if I had to break down. Um, I just have a funny feeling. And I know other towns do the same thing. But those trucks aren't meant to take 12 yards of material and the weight of the plow and the frame and the weight of the sander. It's a lot. It's more than they're meant to handle, I think. I don't know what you think about that, Steve. Is this our 10-ton well, truck? 10-wheeler. Ten 10-wheeler, ten I mean. Yeah. Well, any of our, any of our vehicles, yeah. but especially – and maybe, yes. maybe this transmission problem is, is just a fluke, but – if, if those trucks without that equipment on it, what are, what, what are the plow and plow frame and a cinder weigh? Three or four thousand pounds? Got it, isn't it? Oh, yeah, more than that. Right? So that's a lot of a lot of extra weight. So anyway, we have some stuff to think about on yeah. that. But we sure didn't get any clear. It all really adds up to money. Mm -hmm. Lots of it. Lots yeah. of it. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow. Okay. So great, so, Paul. <laughs> sorry. Really sorry you came in. Oh, yeah. Well, came that was damn <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's it's tough. Believe me. Every you walk down Monday morning and the driveway's gone and slow mold. That's not the only issue in town. So, yeah. Unfortunately, that's like Liz said. I I don't feel like this is. These are just rarities. I feel like this will be more often than not. It, it has been. It's become more often. So. We had some heavy rains in the last two weeks, didn't we? My driveway was like. The good thing is the ground's a lot drier, so it's yeah. soaking. You know, yeah. the rivers are lower, the ditches aren't nearly as full, so it's. We had one bad storm, but it wasn't as bad as that end of May, early June. Well, and that's the worst time because the, the ground is so super saturated, saturated anyway. It anyway. has no ability yeah. to absorb it. We need to. We need to move on. We need to move on. Thank you, Paul. Yep. Absolutely. Um, you've given us some good, expensive things to think about. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> At least Steve so we're all paying our tax bills. Um, <laughs> I'm going to suggest that we uh, amend our uh, agenda a little bit and hear from our uh, hear from our guests. How much time do you need? Just a few minutes. Well, okay, is that all right with everybody? Sure. That's fine with me. That, that's going to put you back a little bit. Is that a problem? Okay. Five Come on minutes. in. I just, Five minutes. I just have a. Uh, do you so want to have a seat somewhere? Have your, no, I, I forgot your name. My again. name is Marshall Gray. Marshall Gray. I'm okay. Joanne Gray. You Jane. probably remember me from the phone call. I do. Phones. G-R-A-Y or Y-Y? I'll spell my first name, J-O-N-E. That's a three-foot yardstick. That's a pothole on the Three Mile Bridge Road. And it's not good. It really should be fixed. I know you're busy. I spent my first time. Yep. It's like everybody's you know. Well, wait a I, second. Can you can you say it so the rest of us can hear it too? I'm sorry. Talk up. Um, this is a picture I took. The pothole. It. It's on the Three Mile Bridge Road, and uh, that's yeah, a three foot it. yard stick. That's one of them. There's three of them. Oops, I'm sorry. sorry. That's I'm okay. Here. You don't have any I, idea. Oh, this is you had when you were like yeah. yeah. in this and a, and I had had right right there you, as you went enter onto the bridge, there yep. are two very large ones? holes right, right on the bridge right in the wheel tracks. He in the, on the bridge. On the bridge. As you as you enter 
to the bridge. That's to the bridge. It's right in the wheel tracks. And if you hit it just mm -hmm. right, the car hits, and mine does. And when you meet somebody, you don't have a choice. Yeah. Huh. Really. And then you got freedom. the ones down by uh, Paul's. I did. You got the ones by right there by Paul. Paul. What's his name? Uh, John Paul. John Paul's house. Where street. is that? It's the old Ainsworth house, bridge. the big, big one there. Can it be filled with some sort of? It should have been quite a while ago. Then you yeah. got the one right in front of um, George Fox's. George Fox's house. Which is a pretty good size one, which is in the road. Is this also three mile bridge? Oh yeah, yes. there's yeah. three good oh, size yes. ones there. Yes. And the whole front of the bridge, I call transportation because I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. District 5 because of the bridge. And they told me via town. So I says, well, one side's Berlin's, and we know the other side's Morgan. I called and left a message on the machine. I was pretty I was pretty upset because I hit it mm -hmm. with my car. And I got a bent rim on my car. I don't know if it happened at that time or if I did it at another time. But I was not happy because it's, it's a pretty good size hole. It goes mm -hmm. up onto the bridge. And I called and I was not happy. And I said, you got to do something or I'll let the media know. Because, like I said, somebody's going to get hurt because if you hit it right, you can hit that bridge. Ooh, yeah. The bridge is right. If the bridge is right there, and I called back and apologized, and he called back and left another message. My husband wasn't too happy, so someone I works with lives in Moortown. She gave up in Middlesex, gave me the numbers of everybody. Thus, select board. Was it select board? Well, that's who we are. I'm Mary Skinner. I know your board. name, Paul Hood. Yep. Peter Hood. Peter Hood. Right? Yeah. He's called and left three or four messages for you. You haven't returned the calls. And I can't remember what the other name was on the list you called, and they haven't. Re nobody returned the calls. I didn't get. One. I don't think. I, I didn't got call, call you. I know your name. I didn't call. I don't you think I got a call. Down. Liz Sharp. No. I think we're done. I yeah. just wanted to get my point across. I just. They just Appreciate need to be fixed be because it's in the travel portion. Yeah. Somebody's going to hit it and get hurt. Okay. All I all I would tell you folks, and I know this isn't going to make you happy. Because we have been struggling, I, I struggling but, since the spring. But it was before that. These no, I, I understand, but we had an unbelievable winter. I mean, we have just been behind the eight ball. I live in Wartown. I know what it's like. I live up on the mountain over in Ward Brook. I know what the roads are like. We've had to put a lot of money in ours. But like I said, these holes have been there for over almost a year, maybe longer. Do we have any idea of like what the Put some fill in. That's all I'm asking. Put some hot mix yeah. in here. Hot mix would make a difference. Batch, anything. Yeah, that's all I'm asking before somebody really gets hurt. Because if they hit that just right on the three mile bridge, they're going to hit the bridge. Somebody's going to get hurt. Let's go. Okay. Thank okay, you. that's it. That was it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Bye. Bye. So, there, so there are some problems with some pieces of pavement here and there. And I, I realized that I actually went over that bridge last night, oh, right. and I don't remember hitting anything. Although I had a flat tire this morning, maybe I could look good to that. It really <laughs> So I had an incoherent on the pleasant front, and I didn't return. Yeah. I didn't know where Ward. This is what you and I talked about yep. this morning. Oh, Ward. Road was, I was pretty darn sure it wasn't in Middlesex. Uh, so I raised my hand and said, and we're trying to call. But it was a nasty, loud, incoherent phone call. So yeah, I I'm not saying, I I'm didn't saying we don't need to deal with those potholes. Oh, no. But well, in, in the list I showed you today, it had the potholes, pavement potholes right on it. My Wait, so you have a, list. yeah, you have a triage. Well, and so two, are we talking I, months? I'm just curious. No, like, like, I've probably got two, three weeks worth of work. Yeah, and like okay. I explained to Peter, I, I don't know where I'll find that if we've still got winter sand to haul, if we've got grants that we still have to meet deadlines. Yeah. Believe me, we're, I, 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 I wish we were at the shop all day just waiting. <laughs> I, yeah, I, know. I wish that was the case. Unfortunately, I've got a list and we're literally looking for the, the worst bleeding at this point. Yeah. That's the tough part. Yeah. So, so my question is, and I know it's a budget blower, but do we subcontract some of the stuff? It, it might be. The, it might be because, as far as these potholes go, you can put a little patch in some of these, just and it's just great for a few weeks. But it, you got <coughs> if you fix these things, you need to fix them right. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to cost well, us. The a problem is money. we we go borrow the a hot box from Barry City, which they're they've, they, been, they've never, been great. We thank yep. them. We fill the propane, but it's the process of 
hey, is it available today? Well, it's not today, it is tomorrow. Well, I can't tomorrow because I've got a fleet of trucks that we're working mm -hmm. with. But, you know, so it's a, logistically it makes it tough. And I'm not anyway. saying we need one of those, we just, unfortunately, and I, yeah. I return their call and let them know and... There might be a thing where we need to get some small asphalt guy to come in and cut these things out and patch them in and just get them done. And I'm not pushing it off, believe me. No, it's just, just a matter of that. Okay. the when, when. That's, uh, and I think that's, many, you think know, this goes back to your letter. Like, people need to understand that it costs money and the votes are the biggest expense in our town. That's well, the reality. Yeah. And, and it's, that it's, we may need to pay more for this stuff. Right. Yeah. Any other if we're is, if we're going to solve well, these problems. The other thing is, which is which is my pet peeve, is that people expect now year round to drive along at forty or fifty yeah. miles an hour on these roads. Mm -hmm. And if people know, people live on these roads, they know where the potholes are. You slow down and you dodge them. And yes, you might have to stop and wait for somebody else to go by. It's not the end yeah. of the world. I'm not saying it's the greatest thing. But that's dirt roads. we have people who can't get to their houses. You know, that's a priority. That's people can't get out of their houses. Yeah. People would get those flat tires with the sleet. Remember? Sure. Yeah. If you drove slower, you wouldn't get. But they Whatever. also have, everyone has a right to, to, to describe when there's a problem and that right. we no, want to put it on the list that. for fixing. Yeah. So. yeah. And it's on there. Well, I, mean, I call I, them back. And I just with what Peter said, and I will tell everybody here that when I get a call like that, like I talked to a guy today that asked me if we sold a grader a while ago, I did not return his call, and I will not. If somebody wants to be rude and like that, I don't, you get calls like all I don't the time. return the call. Yeah. All the time. I just don't return them. If they want to call and talk to me, I'm, I'm fine. I'll talk to them about anything. But when you get those type of calls and that, they're Especially when they don't live in town. Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if anyone was going to say yeah. something about that. How many of those potholes do you think we have? Oh, I don't know. A dozen. I would say a dozen. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's not a matter of how hard, it, it's just there's worse, there's worse problems right now. And that's what I'm, you know, where, where is the worst? Yeah. And that's where we need to start. Well, and I don't want to respond in an emergency fashion to people who don't even live in our town mm -hmm. just because they're nasty and oh, yeah. relatively were nice enough tonight they calmed it down a little bit they yeah, weren't nice nasty when they the called yeah. oh yeah and yeah. i called them back and i told her kind of a rude message for a first go around especially you know <laughs> in our town I didn't say that but why don't you why don't you call up the governor on <laughs> some of the roads like the interstate anyway anyway so, I just think right. I just think we really a need to, need to get the word out to everybody to try. I mean, I, I have never I have never had so many calls no. about the roads in the summertime. In the wintertime, yes, but summertime, and I'm getting road calls. You're probably getting a lot more than yeah. I. But I got oh, a couple yeah. a week. Yeah. Well, and they're just saying, what's going on? How come the work isn't getting done? A couple done? of those holes every day. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's the lady who collects all, collects all that tax money. <laughs> This is what we all get paid the big bucks for, right? Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, Paul. Thank anyway, you, Paul. sorry to take up so much time, but we'll we'll get right. together some more and talk. Thank you, guys. Well, now yep. we know the bad news coming up. I didn't try to pitch a grader, though. <laughs> You'll be in, though. Thanks, I'll Paul. Yeah. I'll let you know when you meet Louie. Yes, please. The wind is on. All right. I saw Lucas you today. And yes, yes, up to... I'm sorry. I'll go out with okay. Jess if you okay. want. If you want to Jess is getting a good sure. feel of what goes on. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she may have changed her mind. She's been, by like, Whoa. She's she's been sitting she's here got recently. A taste of this. <laughs> so in your packet, there is a letter from Jess dropped off. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Right here. I got it. Yeah. It is August 15th. Well, received it August 15th. I just also would like to tell you that we have had no other applicants. Did we put a notice somewhere on the front porch for did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this was for Demers? Yeah. Can I just read it with you? Yep. I read it. 
Who who stepped down? John Demeter. He said I had no baby. Demeter Demeter Demeter. Oh really? Said, we had Demeter. He he has he has an eighteen month old or something. Mm -hmm. I think it's just you know the usual yeah. public service it takes time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your interest. Yes. Do we have a motion? <laughs> Are you still Do we have any questions? <laughs> uh, I was going to sit here to the end of the meeting just to see what goes on. Well, you can. You were, you were welcome. Stay. You were more than welcome to stay. We're not, to, we're not trying to. We're not trying to shoot you away. You're welcome to come anytime. I'm learning just mm -hmm. by observing. Yes. <laughs> and they have like um, the Vermont leagues of cities and towns. Uh, don't they have like trainings for these kinds of like zoning board? They do. Every once in a while, they can have. Uh, yeah. This. And they're good to go to. They're interesting. <laughs> How many people are on the board, um, zoning board of adjustment? Five. Five. So far, we've got Bill, Roger Hurt, they've been there for a while. Um, Bill, Dan Chris, Bill Ross Nessler? Nope. No. no. He's never been as far as in my history. Who's Bill? I'm sorry. So it's Phil. Oh, Phil. Uh, Dan Chris, Bill lives across the street. Um, the, and uh, I just with her, Roger Hurt and. Mitch? No, Mitch is the ZA. Okay. Um, and Charlene Bowl. And okay. he used to be in also John Demeter, but now John Demeter has stepped off. Yeah. How often do they meet? On an as needed basis. So they don't really need that much. Well, because it's appeal from the zoning administrator decision. That's right? usually what it is, yes. Oh, so this is where we got the deemed approval issue? That's. It can be very interesting. <coughs> so it's, I'm guessing it's six times a year, six or seven <coughs> times a year, typically, Mary? At most, I would think. I would think so, yeah. Yeah. It's usually variances, you know. Yeah, it's variances and appeals from the zoning administrator, mm -hmm. basically. Site visits. <laughs> Get to know the town a little bit Get to better. know the town a little bit better. The challenges in getting everything written up within a timely manner. All right. Do you have any questions? I don't think so. <laughs> Has Sarah filled you in on some of the details of the job? Uh, just a few. Well, Jess is also uh, married to Amy Whitehorn, yes. and Amy is very knowledgeable about things oh, like right. that. <coughs> okay. So I move. Second. Okay, let's move. I'll that second. We vote on Jess. Okay. Or zoning board of adjustment. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Do you guys mind if I just turn off that air conditioner? It's just awful yeah. loud. No, see, is that okay? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. I don't have a sweater on. Well, I'm always like cold it. anyway. Yeah. Okay, cool. But again, thank you. We we mean yeah, that sincerely. Um, yeah. <laughs> we need people who are interested in doing these jobs. It's important. So thank you. So, Sarah, I know we're not going to make a decision tonight on this email issue, but do we have a viable alternate proposal to what or not? We 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 to do. What? It's just so. Yes, we had a salesman come in, and I've got his information over there, who, who said that he maybe can provide us with, when, we, when I told him what Arby was proposing for mail, mailboxes that end in, you know, middlesex.org or something right. like that, he said, no, 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 you don't have to do it that way. It's it's much cheaper. And I did call him. Um, he hasn't returned my phone call. It is summer. So Phil just wanted to talk to him, maybe have him bring him. It just Phil didn't feel comfortable delivering an, you know, or whatever. So we're going to do No, that's it. fine. Yes, but there I mean, is We don't have any idea what the alternate cost is. Uh, not off the top of my head, but okay. it's not $20 a mailbox per month or whatever the crazy situation that was, because that's just nuts and that's, that's prohibitive. That's too many people. Yeah. Because you do all the commissions and... Yeah, and it wasn't, he was, I think that he was saying something like there was a flat fee of something like, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars a year or something for everything so with the other proposal. I know but I don't want to I don't want to speak out of turn I, I asked him to write something down so he just needs to send something to me that's okay right. okay but I just think we need to move forward on that we never yes. seem to get to it I know this is just to avoid us using all our personal emails right having a town email for all the correspondence 
much better. But I do think a couple of those bills are in there because they were delayed in July. Peter, right. did you, I just want to know if you do have some uh, drive <coughs> permits there. On yep, your, I do. I'll deal with them. Thank okay. you. I'm up. I'm up. You're up. Okay. All right. Good news is you all have your financials for the end of July. Um, so there's the good news is that the money we took out of the uh, pavings fund to float us, we're now able to pay back. We've got about just shy, I think, of a half a million dollars in our coffers. Well, so the taxes, money's nothing, coming up. the taxes money's are flush. coming in. So <laughs> that's the good news. Um, so we didn't have to borrow. Um, as you can see, that unfortunately there's a couple of highway bills that have already sucked what we budgeted for the year. <laughs> 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 So wait, that twenty thousand was for this fiscal year. I mean, yeah. for the new fiscal year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and I believe. So we are we are already seventeen hundred dollars in the hole in our equipment maintenance for the year. So, anyway, <laughs> that's. So here we go. Here we there go again. There you go again. So you know, I. I yeah, we're just going to have to watch some things. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody has any questions on it or not. Yeah, it's too hard to really. I mean, it's, it's so just, early it, it, in the It's year so early in. I mean, you know, this is one month into it. Some yeah. of the bills that are in the orders tonight are part of, uh, are included in this because they were dated July <coughs> and then some because they're August isn't reflected into these numbers. So it's Yeah, so this includes some the waters it. for tonight. Okay, some no, is and some, some isn't. some is and some isn't. Okay. Like that, that Charlie Boy's one I believe was dated July. Yeah. So, so it's, it's in paid. this, it's in this, even though you're just signing the order tonight. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we'll know more when she does the other one in a couple weeks. Um, let's see what else was it. I think that was it, I think. Um, I don't think I had anything else. So, do we have a fairly good idea now of where we ended up the year? Uh, yeah, we did a final. I think she did the final. Did we not get that? I don't think so. I thought we got the final number. I thought we. But I don't remember getting the final number. Well, you weren't here at the last meeting. Was, did we get it then? I was on the phone. <laughs> you were on the phone, but you weren't here. Uh, yeah. I don't remember getting you it. You didn't get it? I don't know. That's true. I don't, remember, I don't remember talking about it at the last meeting, that's for sure. Okay, we let me... Uh, and, what were we wrapped up I don't have anything with me. Setting the tax rate. Uh, yes, right. that's what nice. we... So I don't have it with me. Okay. So, um, but I can get that for where we did end up. But I think I'm just we, I'm just we curious. Were, I mean, we, it was in the seventy thousand dollars. Right. We were yeah. pretty close. I think the number I had given you was like pretty close. I had estimated eighty, and I think we came in at seventy-eight or something. Yeah. The board discussed this, and that due to the cost of two major storms this spring, the town was in the hole for seventy-eight thousand five hundred for fiscal year nineteen. How much? Seventy-eight thousand yeah. five hundred. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's for the whole. Yeah. Budget. yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is pretty good, considering how we were pretty worried. It's the about. worst we've ever done, in my memory. Wow. Yeah, I don't ever. No, I never remember anything that even close to that. Um, and we started right down the same path again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Happy days. Okay, thanks, Dorinda. Yep. We never had bad weather like this. Well, and we had such a long winter. Remember, it started in November and it ended in April. Yeah. So oh, the plowing well, began in November. November. Uh -huh. And I heard it's supposed to be snowing and cold the Oh, yeah. Dorinda. That's what somebody That's like an old just said. Yeah. Somebody said well, that on front porch. I hate to tell you, is, have you, 
Vermont Alert has been Alert. beeping and tweeting about what's going to happen tomorrow. We're going to get it again. Oh my God! What? 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 Rain. Rain. Drenching, what's soaking, red downpours. dots, downpours. I haven't seen that text yet. Man. But it may not happen here. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, a lot of the storms the have yes. gone right around. They've gone around they have gone right, right around. There's been lots of warnings that it turns yeah. out to be. Yeah. I haven't gotten my Vermont alert. Scattered thunderstorms high. I, it was maybe, I get alerts from Montpelier and then I get alerts from Vermont alert. So high 79 maybe it was from Montpelier that I got. But anyway. Well, we're not that far, but it, does, it can go right, right around us. All I'm telling you is it yeah, could be happening bad, uh, again is it just tomorrow. tomorrow. Just tomorrow, it's just a, and then everything is going to be beautiful after that. It's going to be in the seven. It's going to be like California weather, sunny and sunny nice. seventies. I get scared. Hopefully, I can get my car home from the garage before that hits. What happened yeah. to your car? What? Why did it die there? When you drive a seventy-five mile car, when you drive a seventy-four Mercedes, Mary. <laughs> oh, your mother. It's a source of home. wonder. Wonder and amazement. Your mother. So you don't need to know the details, but it has it has a known problem, and I said to myself, okay, I'm going to see if I fix this known problem, and if I go up over the hill, if the car dies, hopefully I can coast to the town garage. Well, that's exactly what happened. Thursday's supposed to be ninety. Thursday's not. Are you looking at the? Yeah, it's going to be blistering. I'm looking at Woburn Mass. What, oh. nine Thursday? Sorry, man. Wrong, wrong town. Yeah, no, it's because the wuss, because of the, the somebody's going to be like, I'm like it's not going to be stunning. So moving right along. Okay. She's yeah. looking at Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Enough weather talk. Okay. okay. Approval. Oh, dang. It is the Of July 30th select board approval. minutes. Approval. Is there second. a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We've approved our minutes. Correspondence. Madam Clerk. Mary, you pass on Mary's that people can sign this uh, Do you want to go to the correspondence? Yeah. Sure. sure. Okay. So the first piece of correspondence we have is from Steve. the state of Vermont concerning, I think this is your packet too, but for some reason I don't have mine. Um, that, uh, that there is going to be a hearing August 12th. I do have it. I just oh. failed to get it. Tomorrow. One more time. I'm sorry. Uh, August 28th, there will be a next hearing. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Oh, uh, if you want to provide here. your input yeah. on the Putnamville, uh, Putnamville, you guys, yeah. I think uh, Phil was right. The uh, stressing to the state that there were several school stops there, school bus stops there, yeah. kind of got uh, attention. And it looks like the state has really jumped into action nice it is nice and uh they're going to try to extend the 35 mile an hour zone so they're yeah. not going to lower it to 25 like i'll be wanted but they are going to thank you they are going to try to give people more motorists more warning and i assume that that also means that once they do that we direct our washington county sheriff to move up and down that road so to let people know yeah. so that's that and the other Letter, which I oh. you know, suggested, you suggested that we try and have some people. Go well, there. I'm just raising your awareness of this that it is Wednesday, are August 28th. Yeah, are the neighbors, are the neighbors planning to attend? Do you know, because they're the yes, ones. Yes, I did. I did. Yeah, I did send this all to them and uh, have spoken to them since. And I because I was going to try and go, but I don't. I don't know Where if is I can. Where is it? Where in Barry? Oh, I have worked in Barry. In Vermont Trans Trans Building, Trans Building, that is. 2178 Airport Road, Barry, Vermont. It's the one up on the That's hill. That's right by the yeah. hospital. Yeah. Okay. So it's up near the hospital, or no? It's like you know. It's like on where all the yeah. medical buildings the are. Right there. Used to be in there, yeah. Um, and then we got the letter from Jim Colby objecting to the sentiment uh, last at the July 30th uh, select board hearing uh, that his 11th hour recommendations about the town plan didn't. So do you, I meant to go back and look at the minutes again, yes, but I remember the conversation and the question was brought up as does he have standing? And I thought what we said was that we routinely listened to landholders regardless of whether they were voters. Do, so I what does it actually sense. say in the minutes? Uh, when I read the minutes, it sounded right. So 
Theo said the town plan was a visionary document. Jim's concern might be better brought up after the town plan is approved and zoning regulations are being rewritten. Phil questioned Jim's standing in this matter since he's not a voter. Peter said traditionally the board has always allowed property owners to right. even if they're not voters. Phil said one individual who is a substantial landowner should not be allowed to manipulate the wording of the town plan to his benefit. He said he was, quote, pretty miffed, end quote, when he received this letter at the 11th hour. He said he gives it no standing, but sent it to the, quote, unquote, round file. That's one person. Speaking. And I checked with, uh, and Phil checked the minutes, and, and he did not object to that. Right. Well, all I would say is, over the years, as much as we get frustrated from time to time with Jim, we have given him time in our meetings. We've always recognized his letters mm -hmm. and you know I think he's I think he's out of line and it, it's a good thing he wasn't there because I would have told him that I'm sick of his snarky letter well so do we but, well I, I, I'm, I'm gonna with, with Sarah's help I'm gonna write a response to that letter and I'm just gonna say Jim I, I've been on the board for many years we have always taken time to listen to you and we have always recognized and responded to your letters in this case where you were making suggestions at the last minute at the end of the process, it was difficult to make well, I think suggested that, I think changes. that Sandy Levine said that he had a lot, had a lot of input when it was before the board. Right. And some of the issues that he brought up were addressed. Right. They well, certainly were. And he had written a series of letters that were all forwarded. So, I mean, them. it wasn't like he came in in the 11th hour. He'd been hurt all along the way. And if he. No, but okay. he came in with that yes. letter that we were referring to at the right. 11th hour. All, all, all I'm saying is saying. you should say that, it, that you understand that he had a lot of input and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And now you're trying to raise the things that the board didn't adopt at the 11th hour. You know. <laughs> he's never going to change. He's the same guy. And if anything, as he ages, he's getting worse. So. We can look forward to more of that, and as we get into the zoning process, I'm sure we're going to have plenty more long, detailed letters from him. And On the problem. other hand, look, he hasn't ruined that field, so. No, but only because we've been keeping him on a tight <laughs> leash, Mary, excuse me. Remember when he, he wanted, would love to have ruined it. Remember when he wanted about, to put a cheese barrel or whatever that restaurant's can't 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 barrel. Browns, you know, we've had all kinds With of... With a sign up. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, he is he is who he is, and he is a large landowner, and it's a very crucial piece of land, and we need to pay a lot of attention to it. Yeah. And I know he didn't like the outcome of the last rewrite of the zoning regulations. Um, he thought they were way too restrictive, making all that land conservation, and uh, he's still mad about that. So, she references that at the end of his letter, where he wanted to build 12 to 24 housing units, and then we yeah, changed. Yeah, that was lives. never. That, again, that was never a real proposal. I mean, he comes in with all, you know, what's the sense of the select board on this proposal? Yeah, right. We say, well, it doesn't look like it's going to meet the zoning regulations. Well, what about it? You know, blah, blah, blah. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying. We need to be respectful of him. We need to be polite to him, but we don't need to be too polite. And, and on what Peter is saying, he has come in a lot of times with these proposals, and they're just um, a scribbled thing on a piece of paper, you know, of an idea that he has, but he's never mm -hmm. tried to formalize anything. Right. So, you know, and I'm sure there's, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sure there's more of that to come. Okay. Well, <laughs> correspondence. That's it for correspondence. That's it for correspondence. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will say that I'm getting a lot of positive feedback about the four payments. Some people are kind of oh, confused, fine. saying that it doesn't, um, you know, I want, what if I want to pay my taxes all at once? And you, say, you can do that. You can pay your taxes all at once. People are still confused over the loss of the 1% discount, but they're happy about the four payments. Yeah, yeah. we lost that 1% discount well, years ago. Know, but right. you know, people just, still you know, taxes are one of those things people don't remember for good reason. It's just like yeah. a psychological. Right. <laughs> Wonder why that could be. Look at what a pretty day it is outside. It is lovely. Let's go we enjoy it. We'll all be outside. Okay, well, we do need to have an Thanks. executive. Pick of the week, isn't so that we need to Wuthering Heights did? Pick of the week. We need a motion to go into an executive session. Well, there's, no other, yeah. Yeah. there's no other regular business. We're going to be going.